Hey folks, today I'm talking about wood carving the female profile. Now this is a project that I started a few months back and it was a requested video. People are often uh, trying to learn about the female face and this was kind of a uh, introduction to female faces and what's helpful about um, this particular carving is it gives you one angle. So you don't have to worry about getting both sides, the left and the right side perfect. All you have to worry about is getting one side and in proportion. And it teaches you about the perspective, the side view of the face, which is an under um, uh, analyzed part of carving faces. That side profile is incredibly helpful. And so I recommend people when they're carving do these side profile faces. They really teach you about looking at uh, this uh, neglected angle of the side. So um, this carving was uh, really uh, quite fun to make thanks to Tom, uh, I'm sorry, uh, John Shenkoski for doing the, the filming. Um, he's my camera guy and that's why my hands aren't in the way as much. Uh, he was my camera guy for this video. Um, and uh, Thomas Polelski as well on the uh, owl carving video. So thanks to those guys. Uh, and in this project, uh, I, I really do kind of just keep it simple, um, but I do want to show the realism, the, the elements of realism. So I'm using a big gouge to get the major kind of top and bottom and, and, and major high points and low points in. Um, this is something that's very typical of me and the carvings that I do. This is a number nine, which means that it's a very curved chisel. There's a lot of curve to it. And... Um, there's a scale from one to nine, one being flat and nine being most curved. All right, you have your tens and elevens, uh, off topic thing, but uh, I'll talk about it later. Um, the point here is I'm using this uh, very curved chisel, number nine, to create the grooves of the uh, eye sockets and under the nose, the under part of the mound of, uh, of the nose meeting the mound of the mouth. Um, and so, in this case, I've got my even larger number nine. That's a 15 millimeter number nine. I'm coming on either side of the nose with that. And I'm establishing the triangle of the nose. And it's not because the nose in, in its finished position, obviously, is a triangle. But it's to tell me to keep away from certain areas of the nose so that I don't make it too flat. And that is the tendency of people who are carving faces to make the nose and the cheeks and everything too flat and so um, I'll block out the uh, shape of the nose and that will keep uh, the protrusion or projection of the nose that I talk about. Um, the uh, hollow of the eye, uh, continue to bring that back. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm taking the uh, forehead back in just a moment here. You can see on my face uh, there is a kind of flat plane of the uh, forehead um, and you have the brow ridge which comes uh, cascading down to the lower eyelid. And so I want to make sure that my forehead is uh, prominent and slightly flatter than the male forehead. So in other words, from the brow ridge to the top of the head, the angle is not going to be as great. You can see the angle of my forehead is a little bit more exaggerated because of the male, uh, the typical male uh, forehead. So that being said, <clears throat> I'm coming in uh, with my uh, big uh, number nine to kind of refine the brow ridge, uh, take the material around the sides of the eyes in this kind of uh, uh, lateral corner of the orbicularis oculi. Um, for those of you who are not uh, in the anatomy world, uh, that's just the round muscle that wraps around the eyeball and that uh, literally extends to the eyelids and it helps you to open and close your eyelids. Uh, it's really a, sh a sphincter muscle. I almost said sphincter, like a German. But it's a sphincter muscle, which means it closes and opens, uh, and it's sort of circular. So that being said, I'm going in, and of course, you. Uh, speaking of which, you uh, real anatomy experts uh, will probably correct me about uh, the formal definition of a sphincter, but um, I'm just a lowly woodcarver, so uh, that's good enough for me. 
Uh, again, that forehead, we don't want it to stick out too much. We want it to be a little bit flatter from this side. You don't see the angle won't be as great. Again, and I'm using my uh, four to illustrate that the nose sits halfway in and out of the face from the profile, meaning the ball of the nose sticks out and the uh, agla or the flares uh, stay within um, the line that I just uh, created by holding up my gouge to the top of the forehead and the bottom of the chin. So there's that projection. Of the nose, the ala sits in the face, and the ball of the nose sits out of the face. Here I'm using my big number four again to kind of rough in the size of the cheek, the temples. Um, and really, I'm just uh, kind of trying to look at it from as many angles as possible, even though it's a side profile. I really want to look at the front view as well. So that's me um, with the new camera angle showing you what the thing looks like from the front. If it doesn't look right from the front view, or the, in this case, it's technically the side view. Um, not to confuse you, but if we don't look at the face front to on, in other words, the profile will be not So, that, um, using my number four to come underneath the chin, to pare down the chin and cheeks a bit, uh, she looks a little bit wide. And so I'm just, you'll see that I'll pare down the sides of her face, the cheekbones, her temples, the hollow behind her temples. Um, starting to form the mound of the mouth. Now, this carving is, uh, again, excellent for beginners. Um, it's excellent for intermediate carvers and even more advanced carvers who haven't uh, adventure, uh, ventured too far into the territory of carving female faces because, like I said, they are challenging. They're very challenging. Um, the trick is with female faces is to understand that the features are soft and the proportions generally a little different. The noses are a little shorter. There's usually an upturn, a straight or an upturn nose, which means the tip of the nose kind of gradually scoops downward to the um, bridge where it meets the forehead. You have a flatter forehead, as we talked about multiple times before. You have slightly more prominent lips. You have a um, soft softer, less defined um, angularity in the brow structure, the uh, angle of the brow from the chin to the, uh, to the uh, angle of the um, jawline back by the ear. That angle is actually greater. So in other words, um, you're going to see that it climbs higher more quickly instead of it being flatter and more square. It's uh, yeah, I'm sharper I'm almost, I'm and, uh, pointier in the sense that that angle from the um, from the angle of the jaw, the base of the angle of the jaw toward the ear to the front of the chin is going to be less straight. Less, it's going to have more of an angle, if you will. And you'll see here what that looks like if you're confused with what I'm saying. Um, as I start to bring the cheek line, or the, I'm sorry, the jaw line up, and there you can kind of see the corner of her ear going down to her chin. In, the angle is definitely more dramatic, and you'll see it better here in a moment. Carving the uh, ball and the separation from the ball and the flare, nostril flare. And coming in, uh, shaping the cheek area, bringing, kind of tapering uh, back the material around the mouth. Because really the mound of the mouth is created by another uh, sphincter muscle, another uh, orbital uh, sort of um, muscular thing. It's called the orbicularis uh, oris or mouth. So again, a round muscle that allows the mouth to open and close in the same way that the eyes open and close. So we have to keep that in mind when we're shaping. Uh, these are kind of round uh, muscles, so we're going to create round shapes for the mound of the mouth and for the eyeball. That being said, I'm starting to take the forehead back a bit. And, and really, there's not a, uh, th there is an order of events in the sense that the things that stick out the furthest, I start first on. Uh, but as far as the uh, execution of the steps, I'm really just trying to keep everything in balance. And what I mean is, I want the nose to stick out further than the forehead. So if I'm carving the nose and I realize that it doesn't stick out enough, I'll bring the forehead back. And the same with the mouth and the nose. If the mouth comes too far forward, I'll reduce the mouth in relationship to the nose or reduce the nose in relationship to the mouth. And so there's a bit of a dance that happens here. There's that angle of the jaw I talked about, how I sharpened it up and brought it up a little higher. Now, I'm using a famous actor, uh, sorry, not actor, musician, Billie Eilish, as a general reference. This carving I put a lot more work into later after the video, and I really 
it really made it look uh, very feminine and quite nice. I was very happy with the piece uh, and it did sell. Um, but I will say that uh, it is, you know what? I, I take it back. I think I still have it actually. Um, but I, you know, in this case, it's not quite as refined because I was working with uh, about an hour's time uh, for the instructional video, but um, it, it was still, I think, a good representation of the female face. That being said, um, don't rush this. It takes uh, hours to really refine your piece and make sure you're using reference photos that are from the front view and the side view. Um, I am still learning so much about carving faces and there's a lot to be had. And so uh, as far as knowledge about uh, individual faces and really the way you get that knowledge is by studying those reference photos. <clears throat> Um, using a V-tool to separate the... I'm off of my soapbox, by the way. Uh, the V-tool to separate the hair from the face. I'm coming around the uh, brow ridge, separating that out from the upper eyelid. And this is a cool knife. I've talked about it before, but if you don't have one uh, and you're a woodcarver, definitely look for it. Uh, it has a name. I wish I could remember the name, but it's a skewed knife of sorts and just skews in general i used to think were useless like why would anyone have a skew that's stupid like why not just have a knife it's amazing because it allows you to get in tight corners you couldn't otherwise get into and that is super nice uh so i recommend that anyway as i tidy up this piece i uh, wanted to thank you for sticking around i hope you learned something I hope you attempt to carve a female face and you don't get too caught up in the outcome. <clears throat> you enjoy yourself and you learn some things and keep trying because uh, it's taken me a long time to get even close to getting a female face that I think looks feminine. So uh, don't be hard on yourself. I'm still learning myself and we all are together. So keep up the good work if you're in the carving world and you're attempting this stuff. Um, uh, yeah, enjoy guys. Thank you. Peace. Oh, check out the carving school.